Hello, my name is Christian Gull and I will talk about the um, deployment tool which is called Verbal 4. There will be in the next few hours hopefully the release of 4.3.0. We are still in the release candidate 6. But yeah, that's the thing I'm talking about today. Now the question is what is Verbal really? Verbal 4 is a really simple but scalable and stateless um, cluster deployment system, which means you boot a scientific HPC cluster with more than 5,000, 25,000 nodes with the system, and this all goes stateless. It's working, people sometimes think um, why stateless, but stateless makes the thing really simple for the start. Um, yeah, it's very lightweight because the nodes are stable, uh, are stateless. So they boot completely in RAM. Um, if you think you will spoil RAM, that's not always the case. You can then configure a swap, and if there is memory pressure, the whole operating system would be swapped out. Um, Werewolf itself is agnostic against the operating system, so you can run it on a leap and deploy a tumbleweed, or deploy a SendOS, or deploy anything else. It's very flexible because we can configure the node operating system systems with Go templates. And um, that's, if you know, for example, it's a bit like Chincha for Python. And so you can really configure the nodes as you want. And yeah, it's open source. That's the reason why I'm here. Now, it's we are now with Verbal 4. Verbal 4 has a, a predecessor, which is Verbal 3. This is also a very successful um, deployment, uh, HPC deployment system, system. It's actually used in OpenHPC, but OpenHPC will switch in the near future to Verbal 4. Um, the thing was why Verbal 3 was kind of duplicated because it has a, it had um, different storage backends, and this leads to lots of code just to go with the databases, file backends, and whatever. And also it was implemented in Perl, and Perl is kind of not, you do not want really to develop Perl code which is then there. Um, also it transported its own busy box, which always led sometimes to um, licensing problems. And the thing is all this, all the um, HPC distribution systems always have their own mechanism to build the, um, the systems, the deployment systems, which means you have one mechanism to build a SUSE system, you have one mechanism to build a Red Hat system, you have one mechanism to build a Ubuntu system, and this is always complicated because th there's kind of no real um, standard for, of bootstrapping uh, OS. So this is very, re really very hard to maintain for every distro. Then now the question is a bit um, who is behind Verbal 4. That's most likely a company which is called HPC and G, which does HPC consulting. They are also that's the same people which um, invented Aptainer, which uh, is the successor of um, Singularity. Yeah. And also the guys between um, CentOS and Rookie, also from that company. And also me, which I'm working for SUSE, I'm also developing actively in Verbal 4. Um, now, because what components are in now Verbal 4? At the moment, it's just one single service that's called Verbal D, which serves the containers to the nodes. The container contains the operating system. It's not an application container, it's an operating system container. Then you need a TFTP server running on your master server, so that because the whole boot process goes over IPXE, then you need a DHCPD so that you have um, your IP addresses mapped to the nodes booting. Um, you can also use a central DHCP server, which some people do because they are not allowed from central RT to run their own DHCP server. Werewolf can cope with that. And then what you have is another binary that's just one binary where you interact with the node database and say, okay, there's a new node, I want this operating system on it, it has that many inter um, um, 
network interfaces, I will assign or I want to assign this or that IP address to it. You can also directly edit the database because it's a simple YAML file. If you do that and anyone else uses WW control, then you are kind of doomed, but you know what you did if you open it in an editor. There's no warning yet, but there will be a warning. You know what you're doing. Optional, we can also deploy SSH keys. So most likely it's uh, always the root SSH key to all the nodes that you can immediately log into the node. And also the NFS server can configure on the Werewolf master host. That's the most basic things. The rest of the configuration can then be done through templating. Um, now, I spoke, okay, we have this container, and it's not really an application container, it's really the operating system comes in a container. So you download an OCI container somewhere from the internet, and then you can immediately deploy that container to the nodes, which means you can, for example, get the uh, a leap container, so, so and download it, deploy it to the node, and you have a running leap container. You can download, if you think, okay, I, I want to test a new kernel with, you can just download the tumbleweed container, deploy it to the, uh, boot it, deploy it to the nodes, and then you are done. So the boot image is derived from this container. Now, how can you get a container? Most prominent thing is you get it from our registry because, yeah, it's Leap. And um, we have some there. We have um, now containers for Leap 15.3, 15.4, and tumbleweed. But you can also use... Uh, no? Yeah, yeah. Um, Docker or Builder to build a container, import it to the Valve configuration, and then boot your images. You, you always have to import this container to Werewolf because Werewolf has to flatten out the container and make it to a CPO archive that it really, the nodes can boot from it. And you cannot do that um, on time when the nodes request the container because then you would run, if you boot a thousand nodes, you will always flatten them up and this will run into scal scalability issues. Yeah. You can also use Aptainer to build a change root container, input a change root, and you are done. We also have tools to modify the container because yeah, you, you got the one from the registry, you want your favorite, favorite um, toy in there, then you can just shell into the container and say, okay, I want to go in this container, run a super, install the package, go out, deploy the container, you are done. Now, well, heavily, the configuration itself, because every, the, the container is the same for every node, we have to, at a given point, to configure the node that it knows, okay, what hardware does it have, what mounts does it have, which node is it? And this is done with overlay. So uh, overlay is an individual CPIO archive, which is individual for every node. Um, and then this, this archive is simply extracted over the container, which means we have all our config files in this overlay, extracted at boot over the container, and then the node knows, okay, I'm that, this and that node. Um, so that also means we can just add no, uh, we can just add file over, add file with overlays and not in any case remove files with that. If you use them, so they always, if you see them, they have always the WW suffix. We have two kinds of overlay. There's the, the so-called system overlay. That's available at boot time. So, and it's not updated at runtime. So if you put in files, they, they are immediately available when the container comes up. So for example, the IPMI config is in there, the network config is in there, the host name is in there. Um, that's the thing which are in there. But we also have a runtime overlay, and this is regularly updated. So we download the runtime overlay when the host is booted, which means we can have additional security measurements in there, and we can update file in there because this um, overlay is updated every minute can configure it how often it's updated, but so which means you can put in configuration files which can change in there, which is for example in the HPC context, the munch key or the swim.com. Now let's look a bit at the, uh, yeah, and additional we have the host overlays. So we also configure the services which we need for Werewolf 
with now overlays. Um, so you can manage your exports or the etc host or the etcp.conf. These are the files which are managed through host overlays so that we can use the same syntax for configuring all the configuration files by overlay. Looks like this, this is now the, ET, uh, the issue which comes up at the boot that you see, okay, which node it is, um, which container has now booted, which kernel we have used, other additional kernel arcs, and then a list of all the network devices that we know, okay, now I'm really seeing at this or that node. So this is, you can imagine anything else and put many, many really interesting things in this overlays. So um, we also have the, we have shortly to speak about the, the data model. So we have now here in this, this variables, variables and how are they filled in? So we have a data model in, in Werewolf, which means we have abstracted data. So we have the nodes. So the nodes is, is, is the leaf instance. And between the node, there is kind of the profile. A profile is a set of nodes. And then we have kind of same default values for most of the values which go into Werewolf. Which means now, what kind of things can we then really has a node pre-configured already or what kind of data models we have. We have to know, for example, when a node boots, which container it wants to boot, which runtime and system overlays we assign to the node, what kernel we want to boot, or we can override now the kernel so that it can boot with a different kernel so that we can, for example, boot a leap um, container with a tumbleweed kernel if we know, okay, we need newer hardware. The network device can be configured, as spoken um, in Werewolf, the IPMI can configure, and we can also have arbitrary key value pairs in the, um, in the database or in the data store. And now we have a kind of data inheritance, which means for every node, we take, if there's node specific value, for example, um, then we take it if it's set. So for the IP address, you will always set it node specific. And in most times, this is the only really values you set for the node, because for the rest, you simply set them in the profile, because what container it boots, what kind of, or for example, what gateway it uses, all the things you really define in the overlay and it's inherited to the node. So the node really then knows, okay, I got this value from there. And for some other effects like of other things, like for example, the kernel command line, there's the same default value you need it because sometimes you want to change it, but we have the same default value for the, um, for the kernel command line, for the net mask, for, for things like this. There are same default values inside. So for example, now here for the kernel arcs, that's the default argument for the, uh, for the kernel. And you say, okay, um, I want to see now what's really happening, then you leave out the quiet. And if you know, okay, your node needs eight, um, no, uh, no at speed to boot, then you can simply set it. Now here you see a, a listing of a node and then you see exactly, for example, the net mask comes from the default interface. Um, the kernel override means, okay, we have superseded this because we want now the D15.3 kernel. This means this is set really just on the node. There is another value in the, um, in the default profile. So you exactly, relatively shortly know what you have set and what you didn't set. Um, here shortly about the boot process. That's the whole thing. So the node, that's the reason why we needed the FTP server. So we n need to get the IPXE binary. That's the first thing you get. Then we get the IP address. And then IPXE fetches the kernel. And now not per TFTP, but per HTTP, um, which means this is much faster than per TFTP. And then we fetch all the rest, the, the kernel mods, if they are there, container, the system overlay. And now IPXE builds one magic big init RD of this, and then this init RD is booted. Exactly. And then we have our own init in there. We need this own init into Werewolf to configure some more stuff like the IPMI interface. Also, um, SAD Linux needs some configuration. That's this sysfi init configured, this basic stuff here. 
And then we simply call init, put the container. And at the last step, we um, had in the um, WW init, uh, so in the system overlay, we have also the WW client, which then downloads the runtime overlay. And that's it. Now, what that's now the features of 4.3.0. What we will, or what's planned, is a gRPC interface and a JSON REST interface to develop this server so that you can have a web application or you can use other tools to get the state of the, your cluster or change things there. Possible features, what we are a bit looking into is a simple disk management so that you can also be a bit more stateful. Also, perhaps a persistent node install. That's Lots of people are asking for it, and then also perhaps load balancing. Yeah, you can contribute. It's on GitHub. Um, there is also the the Slack channel will move. There is still a Slack channel there. There you can always ask questions, and then there's also there's always a meeting at nine o'clock Wednesday where the development team meets. Okay, that's it, and thank you for your attention. Are there questions um, that I can answer? Yeah, Ekva? Yes. No, it's not. You, you really did, did this system. No, it's not a stripped down system. No, it isn't. It's a normal system D which starts up. And this system five in it, which we do before, um, it's, it's just some shell scripts which behave nicely. So it's really the system doesn't know that, that it's kind of a stateless system. Thank you and